Good evening, everybody. Welcome once again to Case Western Reserve Football. David Wilson along with Ed Doherty from Case Field on the University Circle campus of Case Western Reserve University. Tonight, the Case Western Reserve Spartans take on the Denison Big Red. A couple of unbeaten teams here. Case is 2-0 and on the season. Denison is 3-0, and off to their best start since 1990. Case is coming off a 14-10 win against the University of Rochester two weeks ago. They had a bye week last week, and they get back to action tonight. Meanwhile, Denison is coming off an overtime win against Hiram College last week, in which their fine sophomore tailback, Sam Fioroni, rushed for a career-high 200 yards in the football game. Coin toss is taking place at midfield and it looks like Denison will receive the opening kickoff in tonight's game. It is heritage night here at Case Western Reserve. Case wearing the throwback red and brown jerseys with their home white pants. Denison is in their traveling white jerseys and white pants as well. Well, Ed Doherty joins us here in the booth and Ed, 33 game regular season winning streak for Case coming in and they take on a Denison team tonight that can uh, produce a very difficult challenge. Well, and that's a team for Case that was about a minute and a half from having that winning streak ended two weeks ago in Rochester. They had a very off night, unproductive night in the red zone. They did go 20 to 20 very well against the Ro Rochester Yellow Jackets, but uh, unable to put any points on the board as they had some turnovers in the red zone until under the final minute when Joey Baum connected for the touchdown pass and Case would go up 14 to 10 on the Yellow Jackets. Tonight, uh, a run-oriented offense in the Denison Big Red, a team the case has really dominated over the years, especially going back the last few years. Uh, so again, it'll be a good test tonight for the, the young Spartans, maybe not young in terms of class members, but certainly young in experience as they look to continue that 33-game winning streak. Uh, Joey Baum having a, a very good year. Did have a couple of turnovers in Rochester two weeks, but or two weeks ago, but the uh, 14 days off, maybe everybody gets healthy. Everybody gets a chance to look at some extra game film, and uh, they're ready for the Denison Big Red tonight. Well, Greg Demelak said during the week that the bye week coming this early in the season was probably a good thing. They did have some guys banged up and nicked up a little bit, and that he was uh, pleased with the timing of the bye week this season. Case will kick off. Denison will move left to right to start play in tonight's game. So it's great to have you with us tonight for Spartans football. We hope you enjoy our broadcast tonight from Cleveland, Ohio. Sam Coffey puts the foot into it. Kickoff will be taken at the six yard line. This one will be run back by Fioroni. Loses the football and Case is going to recover the opening kickoff as it came loose. Dan Crawford was the return man. Had the ball pop loose and Case will recover at the Denison 19 yard line and a big break for the Spartans and for the second game in a row, Case comes up with a turnover on the opening kickoff. On the kick. opening kickoff, they did it last week against, or two weeks ago against Rochester. This time Crawford caught the ball on the near side. Hash marks went as far left, saw a lane cut back, but what happened was from behind, the pursuit got him, ball came loose. Case recovered it inside the Denison red zone. Senior quarterback is Joey Baum. He takes the snap, first play of the football game. They'll swing it out. It's caught by Brian Webster. Over on the far side, Webster getting cleared to play after suffering a mild concussion in the late stages of the Rochester game. Webster makes his third reception of the season. This one gets him inside the 10. It is first and goal case at the seven yard line, a pickup of 12. And the Spartans are knocking on the door less than a minute into the football game. From the seven yard line, Joey Baum takes the snap. They'll go back and hand this one up the middle and it is a touchdown, a seven yard touchdown run for the Spartans. That's Derek Bush straight ahead. Bush getting the start on the seven yard line and rumbles in. His first touchdown run of the season coming on his 20th carry of the campaign and the Spartans lead it by a score of six to nothing and the PAT is forthcoming for Sam Coffey. LK showed a three wide receiver set. They split him out on the strong side and Bush had a huge hole to run through. Kick on its way from Coffey and it is good. 
And the Spartans, after getting the fumble on the opening kickoff, march 19 yards. And they do so in two plays. And they take a 7 to nothing lead and quite a statement, Ed, as the Spartans come out. Joey Baum hitting Brian Webster on the 12-yard pass. And then Derek Bush running straight ahead and a nice hole opened for the senior. Two plays, 30 seconds to score. All of a sudden, very reminiscent of what we saw over the last couple of years from this Case team. They would get up early and then really put the hammer down in the late second, early third quarters on teams. Last year, they outscored their opponents in the first half by over 300 points going into the playoff game against Trine. So uh, it's a comfortable position for the Case Spartans to play from ahead, especially at home and during this winning streak. 14-22 to go in the first half of play and the uh, first quarter of play here at Case Field on a very comfortable night. Temperatures in the low 60s to start the football game. Coffee will kick off again. Dan Crawford will be inside the five. He will catch this one at the two to the 10. Out to the 15, near sideline, angles to the outside and gets hit at the 25 and knocked down. Dan Crawford with his second return of the day. This one will go for about 22 yards. He'll be marked down. We'll see where they put him at. It's the 28-yard line, a 26-yard return for Dan Crawford the 5'9 senior out of Upper Arlington, Ohio. And we'll see Max Paulus come out. He is the starting quarterback for the Denison Big Red. He's just a sophomore, six feet tall, 190 pounds. He's out of Massillon Jackson High School. Split receivers, one on each side. They'll go to their tailback. This is Crawford getting the start. He runs straight ahead, gets hit and knocked down after a four-yard pickup. And we second down, about six for the Big Red. Crawford, 5'9", oh, yeah. senior out of Upper Arlington High School, and he is part of a very effective tandem back there with their other tailback, Sam Fioroni. Yeah, Fioroni also 5'10", 177, so very similar body types, guys that they don't lose much as they shift from one back to another, Crawford to Fiorini, very similar to what you see with Case between Bush and Deitman. The fullback is Joe Lucking, senior, out of Cincinnati Anderson High School. And right now there's a break in the action. Greg Debelak asking the officiating crew something. Case is leading at seven to nothing. Any idea what the discussion is about? I think it's a, they're looking at the clock and they're talking about either the play clock or the game clock. Well, they break up the meeting near the Case bench. Case in their throwback jerseys tonight on Heritage Night, honoring the uh, football tradition of Western Reserve and Case Institute. Annual game used to be played on Thanksgiving Day at the old site of the Cleveland Municipal Stadium. Max Paulus, the quarterback, calling out the signals. It is second down and eight. Football marked at the Denison 30. They'll swing it out. It's caught by Andy Carpenter, the 6'3 junior out of Lake Forest, Illinois. Carpenter makes the catch and steps out of bounds at the 35. They pick up five, and it's third down and three. Seven-nothing Case, first quarter action. Lights are on here at Case Field. Very overcast evening. They'll break huddle. Lucking offset at fullback. Crawford in the game couple of yards behind Paulus, who works from the shotgun. He'll take the snap on third and three. Looks to get rid of it. That ball is batted down by Dale English, who got in there and got past his man to knock it down, and it brings about fourth and three. Well, English got a good push against Kevin Drake, and then when he realized that Paulus had taken the three-step drop and planted, he stopped, put his hand up, knocked the ball down. So smart play by Dale English to realize he wasn't going to get to Paulus and the best defense at that point is to get your hands up and knock the football down. Dan Calabrese and Zach Homick will drop back deep to receive this punt. Here is the kick from Jake Schaefer, and it'll be fielded by Calabrese at the 27 to the 30. Puts his head down, gets hit, and knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Defensive coverage there by John Wilson, the freshman 
out of Hawken School in Gates Mills. 13-14 to go in the first quarter. John Wilson had a, a terrific senior high school season at Hawken a year ago, now playing at Denison and getting some special teams action as a freshman. The Joey. Hawks a perennial power. Northeast Ohio is a small school. Yeah, re returned to the playoffs last year and won a game. Two tight end set for Case. Joey Baum takes the snap. They will give this one to Bill Deitman, his first carry of the night. Deitman powers his way to the 40, running behind a nice block there by Matt Yanasco. Cullen Dolan came from his right tackle position, too. He came around, cleared out that hole, looked for somebody to block, and Deitman ran right off Yanasco and, and Cullen coming from the weak side. 12.45 to go. We're in the first quarter. Seven to nothing case. Bryce Coleman lined up at tight end on the left side. Two receivers on the far side. Holmick case. and Nicely. Case is unbalanced to the right. High in the backfield. They'll hand it to Deitman again. And he gets a couple of yards short of the first down as he dives straight ahead. Running behind Trevor Labarge. Deitman was nursing a sore ankle against Rochester and was limited to 12 carries and 12 yards in that 14 to 10 victory. Bush has run for seven and a touchdown so far tonight. Now Case goes unbalanced to the left. They have three offensive linemen to the left side of the center. Third and two. They will hand this one to Derek Bush and he has the first down. Got hit. Kept the feet moving again. Yanasco is in there. Also some nice blocking for Derek Bush by Cullen Dolan. And the Spartans have a new set of plays to work with as Bush gets him out to the 47. Well, there was no secret on that. Power to the left. They came in with the fullback. That's five big guys in front of Derek Bush. And Bush picked up the needed three yards for the first down. Baum will work from the shotgun first and 10 from the case 47. Nicely goes in motion. They will let him carry it. Now he wants to throw it. Back to Baum. Baum wants to throw it. He will fire it to Webster. Caught at the 30-yard line and tackled at the 29. The razzle-dazzle comes out early. And Case comes up with a big-time gain from the 47 all the way down to the Denison 29. Denison had brought eight players into the box. They went to a 3-5 set defensively. Showed a blitz. Case beat it. And then the defensive backs carried Homick deep. Webster was open underneath for the reception. Brian Webster, his second catch of the day. That one goes for 24 yards. Baum will do a quick out now to the right side. Webster makes the catch. And he crosses the line of scrimmage but gets tripped up on an ankle tackle. And he's down at the 26-yard line. Those little bubble screens and the inside-out screens to the wide receiver are what Brian Webster became known for two years ago. And it was really, he'd catch a pass on, on third and four for five yards and move the sticks. Brian Webster was a first down maker a couple of years ago. Third catch of the night for Brian Webster. That was his 50th career reception for Case Western Reserve. 10.35 to go, first quarter. Baum back to throw, screen pass to Derek Bush. Makes the grab, 25, 20, 15, down to the 10. Still on his feet, hit and knocked down just short of the goal line as Bush Caught it, ran with it, almost scored his second touchdown of the night. Boy, is Derek Slush, offensive coordinator for Case, really coming up with some creative plays there. Three wide receivers to the left. He ran them all off the ball, created a huge void for that screen pass, and catching it in space was Derek Bush and taking it all the way down to the one-yard well, one line. So far, Joey Baum, four for four in the football game. Full house backfield. They'll go to LaBarge, and he... Dives in, did his knee touch before the goal line? No signal yet. They will say he is short. down. Yep. He got his left hand down there trying to keep his knee from going down, but it'll be second and goal from the one yard line as Trevor Labarge, the 5'9 fullback out of St. Louis, Missouri, looks to punch it in. He had a touchdown in week one. They will go this time to Bush. He's in. Final yard carried by Derek Bush, his second touchdown of the night, and Case extends the lead to 13 to nothing 
here for in the first quarter. A two tight end, tight T formation. That's the kind of play you draw up for the fifth and sixth graders. Nothing fancy about that, just the, the four back taking it off the uh, five hole. And for Case, getting that little slant into the end zone behind the power offensive line. All of a sudden, it's 14-0 real quick, pending the extra point. Here's Coffee's PAT. It is up, and it is good. Case Western Reserve leading Denison now 14-0 with 9.39 to play here in the opening quarter at Case Field. And the Spartans, Joey Baum, 4 for 4, 63 yards. Brian Webster, three catches, 38 yards. Derek Bush, a screen pass for 25 and three carries for 12 yards and two touchdowns. And quickly, Case taking control of this game at, at 14 zip and moving the ball at will on their first two drives, albeit the first drive was only 19 yards due to the turnover. Yeah, but it didn't take very long. And that only took 30 seconds, two plays. This drive, uh, about 65 yards. Yeah, 65-yard, eight-play drive for the Spartans. Went right down the field. Denison sending back Sam Fioroni and Dan Crawford to return this kickoff. They set up at about the four-yard line. Sam Coffey, the senior, approaches the football. End over end kick. This will drift into the end zone. Crawford will bring it out. It's the 5, the 10. Down to the 15, 20, middle of the field. Is wiped out at the 25 yard line. Case, some good kickoff coverage there. First one to Crawford was Adam Watson, the sophomore out of Mentor High School. And the Big Red will take over at the 25. Well, Dennison had an opening possession where they caught the kick and fumbled the ball then had a three and out on their last possession. Things have not started very well for the Big Red. I mean, if you could come up with a worse scenario, I think Dennison is probably still looking for that. Lucking and Crawford in the backfield. Lucking the fullback offset. Paulus in the shotgun. Two receivers on the right, one on the left. High snap. They get it uh, down to Crawford, but he is hit and knocked down for little or no gain as he tried to run on the left side behind the fullback, Joe Lucking. Well, that play wasn't going to go anywhere from the start. The case defensive backs recognized run on the snap. All three of them, as soon as the ball was snapped, headed towards the line. They knew, including Kyle Snyder here in the, the free safety position, they recognized run just from the formation. Braden Lair, a former Denison quarterback, lines up at wide receiver, wide right. Paulus takes the snap, drops back to throw, guns it for the far sideline, and it is incomplete. Pass was intended for Andy Carpenter, and he was hit as the ball arrived by Kerry Dieter. The case sophomore out of McKees Rock, PA. Joe Eight. Lucking, the fullback, Dave, I think... Uh, for Dennis and Paulus missed an opportunity there. He locked on Carpenter on the false far side, but uh, had Lucking underneath wide open in the middle of that defense for Case. Andy Carpenter lines up wide left. Lucas Graham, a junior out of Zanesville, is checked in. Slot receiver on the left side. Paulus rolls that way, looks to get rid of it, throws on the run, and incomplete intended for Graham, who was on the far sideline and covered by Zach Haas. It's incomplete and it's fourth and 10. Another three and out for the Denison Big Red. They've now run seven or six offensive plays and have gained exactly seven yards. Fourth down and 10 from the 26 yard line. Dan Calabrese and Zach Homick back deep. The kick from Schaefer, spiraling kick, sends Calabrese back to the 33-yard line. Gets to the 35, out to the 38. He is knocked down and tackled. Denison tackle recorded by Charlie Coleman, the sophomore out of Belgrade, Montana. James Hawley, senior wide receiver on coverage, slow to get up for Denison. Looked like he turned an ankle or a knee at the bottom of the pile. Now Hall limping off, and now the case... Offense comes back out. 
As lineup, Zach Homick, far right side. Nicely, and Webster are in the slot on the right side. Bryce Coleman at tight end on the left, a whistle. And Dennison's called the timeout, I believe. Looks like a timeout taken by the Big Red. And they'll talk things over with 8.35 to go in the first quarter of play, 14 to nothing Case. We'll pause as well. More action coming from Case Field in just a moment on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. at Case Field, where the Spartans have the early lead on the Denison Big Red by a score of 14 to nothing with 8.35 to go here in the opening quarter of play. Case with two quick touchdowns, both of them scored on runs by senior Derek Bush. Same formation, now three wide receivers on the right side. Baum takes the snap in the shotgun, hands to Trevor Labarge, who Dives ahead and gets a couple of yards. Was tackled quickly there on good defensive coverage by Cale Garberick, the sophomore defensive back out of Olentangy Liberty High School. In and around the Columbus area. Short 40 minute drive from Columbus over to Denison, Granville, Ohio. A lot of players from the Columbus area dotting the big red roster. Baum will throw it out to Homing. 40, 45, 50. Down to the 45, 40. Breaks a tackle on his feet at the 20, to the 15, to the 10, a five. It's a touchdown, but there is a flag on the play. They're going to get one of the interior linemen for either a hold or a block in the back as he was coming out. I didn't see who it was, but it is a hold, Dave. And Sean nicely had a great block out here as did Cullen Dolan, but I didn't see who got caught inside and either had a hook or a push in the back, and they're going to bring it back from there. So it'll look like almost be a no harm, no foul. If it's 10 yards from the spot, it should take it back right to about the line of scrimmage and still be second and long for the Spartans. In fact, the Spartans will gain a yard out of that play. Second down and eight. The football is marked at the case. 42-yard line, so wipe out the touchdown, and Case will have a second down play. 7.51 to go, first quarter. Baum fakes a handoff, rolls out to the right, gets rid of the football, nicely makes the catch across the 45. He's wrapped up and tackled at the 41-yard line. Sean Nicely, a senior out of Willoughby South High School with his sixth reception of the year. Now you gotta give credit to Tony Opperman on that play. As Baum rolled to his right, Opperman came from his left guard position, picked off the defensive end for Dennison, and created a nice seal and that extra second for Baum to plant his feet on the rollout and hit nicely downfield. Helmick and nicely line up on the left side. Joey Baum under center this time. Bush is in the backfield. He'll take the handoff. Leapfrogs a tackler, lands on his head. Hopefully he's all right. Down at the 38-yard line, a Denison player is actually shaken up on the play, and I thought if anybody would be slow getting up there, Ed, it would be Bush, but a Denison player injured, and they are hustling out to check on the player, and I cannot see the number. He's flat on his back right now. Is, is that where Bush landed? Did Bush land on that player with either a shoulder or an elbow maybe to his chest? It's very possible. It, Bush landed on the top of his helmet on the turf, but you're exactly right. I think a shoulder or knee might have come down on the player who is currently hurting. 7.20 to go in the first quarter. Case coming out firing tonight. Joey Baum, six of six for 91 yards. And harking back two weeks ago at Joey Baum, in that game against Rochester, 27 of 36 for 347 yards and two touchdowns. And in the final 
drive of that game. Joey Baum, five of five. And so opening this game, six of six, this young man has completed his last 11 passes. He to find a rhythm, and we talked about that two weeks ago in Rochester, how he had some inconsistency, had a couple interceptions in the red zone, but in that final drive, Baum really kind of blocked everything out, got himself refocused, took Case down the field, and that happened after a really bad call on a kick return against Case when, when Homick was laid out and Case ended up losing about 15 to 20 yards after that fumble, bad call, missed call, and Baum calmly took him right down the field, 83 yards, and laid in a perfect pass in the end zone for the touchdown, and Case came away with that 14 to uh, 10 win last week. Well, unfortunately, the news is not good from the field as they are going to call in the EMT team and bring the ambulance on the field, I believe, or at least a cart, and the injured Denison player will be taken off the field. Uh, they are not showing any signs of moving that player or asking him to get up. But there was movement in his legs when he was on the field. As soon as the first trainers arrived, he moved uh, his legs. And you can see that clearly from up here. But uh, obviously they are going to play this very cautiously and it looks like he will not be coming off the field under his own power. Seen injuries like this before, maybe five, six years ago, a high school player had what looked like a, a knee or a, a shoulder, but they didn't move him. It turned out to be a, a dislocated hip with the pelvis. And in that case, they're, they're really careful because you need that joint really, if it gets exposed, has, has major problems not only instantly but down the road as well. So if it's a hip, uh, they're going to take every precaution they can. They are going to bring the cart out, so it'll be uh, a break in the action here while they attend to the injured Denison player. Jack Hatem is in his first season as the Denison coach. He is out there talking with the player. Hatem in his first season as head coach, but he has been at Denison for five years. The last three as the defensive coordinator. And a Lancaster, Ohio native and has been a very successful high school football coach in the state of Ohio. Coach oh. of the year a couple of times at different schools and an interesting guy. Eddie's also been a successful baseball coach. And in fact, in 1991, led Bishop Watterson High School in the Columbus area to a state baseball championship. So quite a varied coaching background. Yeah, quite a legend in and around the central Ohio area. Uh, another positive sign, Dave, if you're looking for them, the injured player, we can't identify him yet, is uh, they've taken his helmet off as well. Ordinarily, if it's a neck injury, they'll leave the helmet on and secure it. We also saw his legs move, so we're confident that it's not a, a spine injury of any sort. And uh, another, if you're looking for more positives, is the fact that both the Cleveland Clinic and University Hospital are within a couple of blocks of the stadium here. So some of the best medical care, not only in Cleveland, but in the world available, almost instantaneous. Well, we have 7.20 left in the opening quarter here at Case Field, where it is Heritage Night tonight. Case wearing throwback jerseys featuring the red and brown of the Old Western Reserve and Case Institute teams taking on Denison tonight. Homecoming is next Saturday. We'll get back to daytime action next Saturday at 1 o'clock against the Allegheny Gators, a new team on the schedule this year. And I'm a member of the North Coast Athletic Conference, but a team Case has not seen in their arrangement with the NCAC. It's a 1 o'clock start. You will have the Internet call, and I will be down in the, another booth. The player is now up. And uh, looks like we can identify him as Adam Fruden, a junior linebacker out of Matamidi, Minnesota, and has been one of their top defensive players this year. And he actually got up under his own power and has now been placed on the gurney, which will take him off the field. Right arm and shoulder 
or secure against his body when he got up. Fruden, a middle linebacker with 27 tackles on the season, which ranks second on the Denison team. So that is a big loss for Denison, but certainly uh, good signs. Uh, his parents are down there, and uh, they're all walking off the field now. They have his right arm secured in a brace, Dave, all the way up. One of those air casts that they, they put on instantly and inflate to prevent any movement. Case will have the football second down and seven. They are operating in Denison territory at the 38-yard line, 14 to nothing Spartans. Fruden about to reach the track area where the ambulance is uh, waiting. And we will resume play here with uh, thoughts for uh, Adam Fruden, who has left this game with an injury. Two tight ends set for Case, Lajanis and Coleman in the ball game. Coleman lined up on the right side. Baum takes the snap. They'll hand first to Bush. Now to Nicely, who wants to throw for Homick in the end zone. It's up for grabs. Knocked away. Incomplete. Nicely defended by the Denison Big Red. They had Drew Clannon back there. Clannon, the junior out of Circleville, Ohio, and he was step for step with Zach Homick and knocked the ball away. Well, ni Nicely may be taking some, some pointers. His cousin was a quarterback at Willoughby South. And now plays down at Akron University and nicely showed a pretty good spiral on that one. Third down and seven. Baum will work from the shotgun. He's six for six tonight. He will throw this one quickly out for nicely. Makes the catch out across the 31, which is where they needed to be. And it should be a first down as they will mark this one on the 30-yard line, and they are moving the chains, and that's a seven-yard pickup, and Baum is now seven for seven. You got to like the route, too, by Nicely. Drove down to the 30-yard line, sharp cut to the outside, and was right there about a yard past the sticks for the first down. 6.50 to go in the first quarter. This one handed off. Case giving it to Kenny Reardon, and Reardon rumbling all the way past the 15, down to the 10-yard line. And the freshman getting his first carry of the year, but it looks like it'll be coming back as Case is going to get hit with another holding penalty. Yeah, that one came from the umpire. Bryce Coleman's going to get caught for the hold. Reardon out of Spring Grove, Illinois. Checking into the lineup for the first time, but that one will be wiped out. Coleman comes off. Reardon comes off. Webster comes out. Nicely and Homick are in. Colin Repko has checked in as a slot receiver. And another, oh, I thought they were throwing the flag. They were tossing it back to the, <laughs> the umpire. <laughs> and again, the umpire in college football remains six yards behind the line of scrimmage in the defensive linebacker area. In the professional ranks, they have moved him to the offensive backfield. Six and a half minutes to go. First quarter, 14 to nothing case. Baum back to throw. Little screen pass. It's caught. This is Derek Bush across the 30, down to the 25. And he is tackled right there. Grabbed around the ankles by Joel Elliott, the freshman linebacker out of Fredericksburg, Virginia. But a big gain for Derek Bush as they get all of the holding yardage back, plus about seven more. Well, Bush was initially hit at the 31. Took the ball all the way to the 24 when he ran through a tackle by Tyler Lambert. Bush just dropped his shoulder and just ran over Lambert for the additional yardage. Second down and four from the Denison 24-yard line. Unbalanced left for Case. They will hand this football, and it's going to be Bush again. Nice spin move. Gets down close to the 21-yard line. Very close to first down yardage. Boy, Case went unbalanced left again, and they brought Trevor Labarge as the fullback into an H-back position and again led with the three linemen and Labarge and just let Bush do his thing and pick up four or five yards close to a first down. Labarge, Deitman, and Bush will check in here on third and inches from the 21-yard line. It's that tight T, two tight end formation. Bush goes in motion. 
Baum takes the snap. He will hand it to Trevor Labarge. He has the first down down to the 18, close to the 16-yard line. It's stripped away and taken away by Dennison. Ball was stripped away by Pat Effinger, rolling around the far side, gets back out close to the 29. He's hit and knocked out of bounds. Dennison takes over. Well, I Greg Demolek is questioning the linesman. Sure looked like Labarge's knee was on the ground as he was falling forward. The ball was just taken away at that point. Hard to believe the whistle wasn't blown and it wasn't a dead ball. And Debs kind of walks away and throws his hands down in disgust. Doesn't like the call at all. And from up here, it doesn't look like a good call either. Looked like he was down uh, close to the 16-yard line. But Pat Eppinger came out of there with it. It's a turnover against Case. First and 10 from the 28-yard line for Dennison with 5.02 to go. Here in period number one at Case Field. Paulus fakes the handoff. Little play action here, but now he's caught in the backfield and tackled. Sacked by Dale English. Dale English, the UAA leader in sacks the last two years, comes up with his first of the season, and the Spartans throw Paulus for a loss of about seven yards. Second down and 18. 429 to play. We are in quarter number one, 14 nothing case. Well, you got to remember, Dennison's had two, three and outs on their first two offensive possessions. Pitch to Fioroni, his first carry of the night. He's knocked down from behind, lands at about the 26 yard line. Fioroni tackled on the play by Jake Adams, who has just been a force defensively for Case. Coming into this game with a season high of 27 tackles, with a team high 27 tackles, and he wrapped up Fioroni there. It's third down and 12 from the 26 yard line. The sack really hurt them, and that could be a big play on this drive. Well, this is their ninth offensive play, is Dennison. They have five offensive yards in the ball game. Paulus set up at the 21 in the shotgun. He takes the snap three-step drop, looks downfield, gets rid of it, and this ball is going to be incomplete or picked off. It is going to be Case football on an interception by Matthew Davis, the junior out of Chatsworth, California, and it was just a matter, Ed, whether that ball was going to pop loose as he was hit and knocked to the ground after picking it off. Well, and Davis got position because he was trailing the play, Ball was thrown to the wrong shoulder on the out. It was thrown to the inside shoulder. Davis stepped in, took it away, fought with the receiver, and eventually rolled over with the ball. So the fumble, and now the interception. No harm, no foul for Case. First and 10 from the 26-yard line of the Big Red. Case leading him by a score of 14 to nothing. Offense back on the field now for the Spartans. Ball back to throw. He will throw over the middle, and that one is incomplete. Looking for Brian Webster on a post-pattern crossing over the middle of the field. And for Joey Baum, that's his first incompletion of the night. His string of completions stops at 19. Well, Scott Baird was playing free safety, and his only intention there was to lay out the case receiver. He didn't play the ball. He led with his helmet, and lucky the ball was incomplete, and he missed Webster. His sole intention was to be a missile into Brian Webster. Bomb to throw. They'll go to Zach Homick. Makes the catch. Tries to sidestep a tackler. Loses the football, and it is up for grabs. Well, it's Homick it, against four white shirts. There's no chance. Dennison came in there collectively trying to get the football, and it was on the back of Zach Homick. And he somehow got it back. The entire, well, I would guess probably five white shirts were laying on Zach Homick when he dropped the football. Yeah, and the ball was on his back as he uh, hit the turf, but somehow he reached back there and got possession of the football. It'll be third down and 13, and Case will ask for and get a timeout. We have 2.53 left to go in the opening quarter here at Case Field under the lights tonight, and they lead the Denison Big Red by a score of 14 to nothing. We'll take a timeout as well. Back with more Spartans football in just a moment.
2.53 remaining in the first quarter. David Wilson along with Ed Doherty and our statistician spotter, Patty Doherty tonight. Case with a 33 game regular season winning streak dating back to November 4th of 2006. That streak is on the line tonight against Denison. Case has won the last five meetings against the Big Red, including a 38 to 13 win last year in Granville, Ohio. Webster is lined up wide left. Two receivers on the right. That is Homick and Nicely. Nicely in the spot. Deitman in the backfield. Baum takes the snap. They'll go to Deitman. A lot of running room. 30, 25, down to the 20. Knocked out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Defensive coverage on the end of that play by Tyler Lambert, the senior out of Ranger, Georgia. Lambert coming up from a cornerback spot, knocking Deitman out of bounds, but just short of the first down, Ed, by a couple of yards. It'll be fourth and two from the 18, and Case will set up for a field goal attempt. A 35-yard attempt by Sam Coffey. Coffey was 0 for 2 against Rochester, 1 for 3 on the season. High snap. Here is the kick. It is on its way, and it is no good. The timing was off to start with. Well, Zach Scott, the holder, did a nice job getting that football down. It was a high snap from Dale English, and the holder, Zach Scott, did get it down, but Coffey's kick went off to the left, and Case will give it up after the missed field goal, and the score remains 14 to nothing, Spartans. Well, Dennison's three offensive possessions, three and out each time, and they've run the ball on first down each of the three possessions. Max Paulus, the quarterback, a sophomore. Back out to run the Denison offense. They go to Fioroni, and he is hit and knocked down by English in the backfield. And the spot is going to be right about the 18-yard line, so they lost two on the play. Fioroni not able to get any running room there. He had a 200-yard game against Hiram last week in an overtime win for Denison. They are 3-0 on the season. Their best start since 1990. Fioroni remains in the backfield. He's the lone back to the right of Max Paulus. Three receivers. Paulus takes the shotgun snap, rolls right, gets rid of the football, makes connection with his receiver across the 20. Now it is caught on a short route, Corey Daff, a sophomore tight end, 6'3", 242 out of Massachusetts, makes the catch. It'll be a long third down here. They're looking at a third and six. Now Case is playing man-to-man -man in the secondary, and they're letting the linebackers just go sideline to sideline and kind of playing an underneath soft zone, but man-to-man -man in the secondary. Corey Daff goes off the field injured. Looked a little dazed after taking that hit after making the catch. One minute to go in the first quarter. Back to throw Paulus. Gets rid of it. Catch is made by Braden Layer. Well, he'll have enough for a first down if he reached the 30-yard line. That's where they're going to mark it. Layer hit and dropped at the 30, which is exactly where they needed to go. A six-yard pickup. Braden Lair moving over to wide receiver after losing a preseason battle for the starting quarterback slot with Max Paulus. Now, Fiorini did a nice job of picking up Jake Adams. Adams came out of a blitz right up the gut. Fiorini stepped up and slowed him down. They will keep it on the ground here. Fiorini dives back to the line of scrimmage, but gets no more than that. Dale English again in on the tackle with 38 seconds left in the first quarter. Fourteen to nothing. Case Western Reserve leading it. Two touchdown runs by Derek Bush tonight. Joey Baum, ten of eleven, 119 yards through the air. And the only incompletion was just slightly thrown over Brian Webster, 25 yards downfield. This will likely be the final play of the first quarter. They will fire it out. It is caught by Braden Layer, and he dives out of bounds and stops the clock with seven seconds left. Now Case brought another blitz. Jake Adams again right up the middle and 
Paul is doing a nice job getting the ball out of his hands just before the blitz arrives. Braden Lair makes that catch, and now looks like they're going to use a timeout. No, it'll be nope, the end that's of the, the end of the first quarter as they went ahead and started the clock after they set the football. And we have one in the books here at Case Field tonight. It is 14 to nothing. Case leading it after the first 15 minutes of play. We'll step aside for a timeout. Second quarter action just ahead. You're listening to Case Western Reserve Spartans football. Ready to go here. <laughs> In the second quarter, 14 to nothing case. Spartans on defense here. Flag comes out on the first play of the second quarter. Paulus again connecting with Braden Layer over on the far side. This goes across the 41, but again, a penalty flag down near the case bench. Well, case, I think, was in the neutral zone at the snap. Oh, it'll be an illegal shift. And it will go against Dennison. So they'll wipe that last completion out and mark this one off. And they will mark it from the 36 yard line. Very active first quarter, Dave. Teams combined for 37 offensive plays. Case had 157 yards in offense. Dennison just 20 yards in total offense on 14 plays in the first quarter. New play will be sent in. Jeff Cochran, the senior, also out of Maslin Jackson High School, a couple of years older than Max Paulus. Down Elf. to five on the play clock. Down to four now. Paulus doesn't see it. And he just does get it off. They will give a little draw play to Fioroni. Gets to the 35 and out of bounds at the 38-yard line. And Rich Doolin's looking around <laughs> saying, Where's the holding call? Doolin put on a spin move and then had his shirt pulled out of his pants. And no, no hold called against the Denison offensive line. It'll be fourth down and two, and they will have to punt this one away. Jake Schaefer is out to punt. Back deep to receive is Dan Calabrese. He'll set up near his own 25. Fourth and two, they will snap it back to Schaefer. They come after it, but he gets the punt away. Calabrese makes the catch at the 27-30, now to the 35, and he is wrapped up there and tackled just across the 35, and that's where the Spartans will take over with 13.50 to go here in the first half of play. Coming up at halftime, we'll hear from Zach Homick. Get some of his thoughts on the Spartans' start to the 2010 season. Also, we'll visit with Tricia McCutcheon of the Case women's volleyball team, also off to a great start. They were 11-3 and three to start play uh, going into this weekend. Two tight ends set again for Case. Lajanese and Coleman on the field. Now keep it on the ground, and this went to Derek Bush, I believe, was the ball carrier. Let's see, that might have been Kenny Reardon again, and it was the freshman, Kenny Reardon, getting his second carry of the night. Marcus Kluzinski with a few words after the play. Reardon okay. carries it out to the 38-yard line. Second down and eight for Case. They lead it 14 to nothing. 
Two receivers on the right. That is nicely, and Homick, they'll swing it to Homick. They try to give him a little block. It's to the 40, out to the 45, drops the football. Looks like he got it back. He got it back. Well, he stretched out and brought it back in. It'll be close to a first down. 13.05 to go in the second quarter. Homick's getting hit from behind. He has the ball not secure against his body, but a slightly away, but it's the hit from behind that's jarring it loose. So it's not as if he's going face to face with a linebacker or defensive back and having it popped loose. It's somebody from behind, an unexpected hit, and it's coming out of his hands. Yeah, Zach Homick not at all careless with the football. Well, go to Bush, cross midfield, 45, down to the 41 yard line. Nice run by Derek Bush as he crosses midfield and breaks into Denison territory, and he'll pick up about 15 on that run. A great hole open there on a couple of nice blocks. Well, in case back to the hurry up, they're keeping that Denison set on the field. Bush again. Nope, that's Reardon will get the call. It's across the 40, down near the 37-yard line. A pickup of three. Second down as Case starts to work in the freshman. Kenny reared it into the rotation. Now Bill Deitman now back on the field, but it's a much more comfortable set for Case when they can rotate two, three, four running backs. Baum to throw it wide open nicely. Makes the catch at the 35 down to the 30. Knocked out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Nine-yard pickup. Good for a first down as Sean nicely hauls that one in. It's his third catch of the night. No huddle for Case. Joey Baum gets him to the line of scrimmage. 14-0 Case, 12.20 to go in the second quarter of play. Clock moving. Baum takes the snap. They will hand this one to Bill Deitman. Tries to drive over the pile and picks up maybe a yard. And you're looking at a long second down now. Football be marked at the 27. For Case, that's their 14th play on first down, Dave. Nine rushes, five passes. So a little bit heavy on the run on each opening of the four down set. But if you're picking up five yards, six yards a carry, you can be that way. Baum again works from the shotgun. Deitman is in. They fake the handoff. Now Baum will be caught in the backfield as he tried to run for it, but could not get away from Nat Kell, the freshman out of Upper Arlington High School. Kell has been... Uh, very tough this year on the defensive side for Denison, and he records a sack there. The Golden Bears are a perennial playoff team down there in central Ohio. Always in the mix when it comes to making a state semifinal out of Region 3. Kell records his third sack of the season. They swing this one out to metal sets. He makes the catch, but ends up with little or no gain as that pass from Joey Baum was complete but well behind the line of scrimmage and then Metalsitz was unable to turn it upfield. Case will use a timeout. Well they're really in a no man's land Dave. You're at the 30 yard line. It's into the wind. It's too long to kick a field goal at 47 yards and uh, if you punt you could only end up giving away just 10 yards and having the ball skip into the end zone for a touchback. So they're going to talk about what they're going to do on fourth and 12. My guess is that case will go for it, especially with the wind in their face. Well, it will be fourth and 12. And what can you say at about Joey Baum tonight? 13 of 14, 137 yards. And really, Case putting together a game plan that really, you don't want to say it's easy for Joey Baum, but a lot of short passes, guys with those little hitch routes catch and runs on the bubble screens to the outside and he's executing it perfectly well for two years Greg Devilak said that is Baum's comfort zone he likes the idea of having that intermediate to short range passing he's not a guy that's going to stretch the field and we even talked about that in, in years past that Dan Whalen liked to take it downfield Baum is a much more controlled conservative quarterback more in a sense of a west coast offense he can hit you downfield but he is much more comfortable 15 and under We'll see what they do here as they go for it on fourth and 12. Nicely, and Metal sits check in at wide receiver on the right side. Baum wants to go downfield, take a shot at the end zone. Metal sits is there, but the ball is picked off. Intercepted by Dennison Scott Baird, the junior corner out of Shelby, Ohio. And Dennison takes over. 
as Baird goes down at the six yard line. So an INT for Joey Baum, but on fourth and 12, it becomes almost like the punt you talked about, and it's a long field now for Dennison. Well, at that point, I almost question on the fourth down, the mind of the the mind of the defensive back for Dennison to knock that football down if that should have been mentioned in the timeout. First and 10 for the Big Red. Max Paulus from the shotgun standing on his own goal line. They will flip this one to Dan Crawford. Turns it upfield, gets across the 10, 15, and tackled at the 17-yard line. Case getting a nice defensive play by Stephen Roby, the sophomore who ankle tackled Dan Crawford. And the football will be marked almost out at the 18-yard line. 12-yard run for Dan Crawford, the senior. And with the throwback uniforms tonight, Dave, we do have a couple of players defensively wearing different jersey numbers. This is a fumble as they try to hand it off to Crawford again. The ball is loose. Case thinks they have it. Case comes running off. They do have the football. I believe it was picked up by Rich Doolin. Well, Michael Harris was right there. Ball went right underneath him, and Harris is one of those players wearing a different jersey tonight because of the throwbacks. Harris wearing 63 instead of his traditional 93. Wade Self was on the field. He may have come up with that ball as well. He was one of the last guys off. So a fumble gives it back to Case with 10.31 to go in the second quarter. And Andrew Berkebile is now in at center from Mike Allen. And Berkebile wearing 76 instead of his traditional 71. They had a jersey exchange on the sideline earlier in the game. Derek Bush gets the handoff from Joey Baum, bounces off a couple of guys, and gets back to the line of scrimmage. No gain, second down and 10 as Case takes over in the red zone following the turnover. Well, that's the third turnover for Denison inside their own 25. They had the opening kickoff recovered by Case of the 19. The interception, or the, uh, uh, the interception by Case took it down to the 25-yard line. And then the, again here, this fumble, and Case takes over inside the 20. Yeah, three turnovers for the Big Red so far in the first half. We have just under 10 minutes to go in the second quarter. Baum wants to throw it, goes to the corner of the end zone, looking for home. It goes up. He makes the catch. Touchdown, Spartans. You could almost see that one coming. Case isolated. Holmick on the outside. Baum with the two-step drop and laid it up nicely to the back corner of the end zone. Holmick brought it in up over his head, used all of his six-foot-three frame, and out jumped the defender. Zach Holmick's third touchdown reception of the season, almost at in the exact same spot as the game-winning touchdown scored against Rochester two weeks ago. He brings that one down and hits the deck and hangs on. Here is the kick from Sam Coffey. That one right into the pile, and it is blocked. Still a live ball because either team can pick up the opportunity for a conversion on a block kick. So the PAT fails, and it is 20 to nothing case as Zach Homick makes the catch. Homick now four catches on the night for 35 yards. He tonight has surpassed the 2,000 receiving yard mark in his career. Homick has been a four-year starter here at Case as a freshman saw action as the fourth wide receiver in their spread offense, and now is that senior leader for the Case offense. Right now, give or take a few, he is 1,000 yards behind the career record holder, David Kalavig, who finished his Spartans career with 3,015 receiving yards. And if you thought it was pass happy, under Dan Whalen in the early 2000s here at Case. Yeah, they right. would throw the ball 50 to 55 five times a football game. Yeah, our buddy Eli Grant uh, had to ice down after some of those games when he quarterbacked the Spartans. Yeah, he threw more than a pitcher in baseball. Line drive kick by Coffey rolls back to Dan Crawford, who brings it back from the 15, gets across the 25, 30, 35, out to the 40, nice return. Out close to the 41-yard line for Dan Crawford. And he gets Dennis in good field position. The Spartans leading it by a score of 20 to nothing. 
officially for Case. Two plays, 18 yards, 43 seconds on the touchdown drive. Two drives tonight, four scores of two plays and under a minute each. Joey Baum, 14 of 16, 155 yards and a touchdown. He also does have the interception that he threw on fourth and 12, which ended up not hurting the Spartans at all with the almost immediate turnover by Dennison. 9.41 to play, second quarter. They will snap it back to Paulus, and his pass is knocked down by Dale English and almost picked off. Watson and English ran a stunt. Watson from his end position dove to the inside. English cut to the outside and got his hand up and knocked it down. English felt he should have had the INT there. That's the first first down pass by Dennison tonight. Max Paulus in the shotgun. He has Crawford to his right. Two receivers on the far side. Adam Carpenter is alone on the left. High snap in the shotgun. They will flip it out to Crawford on a screen over on the far sideline. Turns it upfield. Gets to the 45. Knocked out of bounds in a pile up near the Dennison bench. Case defense very active tonight. We talked about the stunts up front. The blitzing earlier that time, Dan Calabrese from his strong safety position came on a blitz off the right side of the Case defense away from the swing pass, but Case still being very aggressive defensively, showing the blitz and the stunts. 9-15 and counting here in the opening half. We're in the second quarter. Case leading it by a score of 20 to nothing. Third and six from the Denison 45-yard line. Big red ball. Now Paulus back to throw. English chases him. Paulus gets away. Now he's finally knocked down and tackled out of bounds over on the far sideline. Tackle be recorded by the Spartans. And I did not see who brought him down, Ed. Now Jake Adams was there. Adams is wearing number 20 tonight. Another player with a jersey change due to the Heritage Night. Adams, the middle linebacker, wearing 20. I think it might have been... Uh, Ryan Ferguson, the sophomore linebacker out of Wheaton, Illinois, who finally got to him, but Dale English almost recorded his second sack. They will punt here on fourth and eight. Jake Schaefer gets the punt away, and it will bounce in front of Calabrese and roll down near the 13-yard line, and it is downed there. And Case will have a long field in front, but leading it by a score of 20 to nothing, and the defense holds again with some very nice pressure on Max Paulus. Well, tonight, Dennison has had the ball six times. They've had four punts. Three of them have been three and outs and two turnovers offensively. So the case off or case defense really, really controlling the line of scrimmage and the overall offensive production from Dennison. And this is a team that has scored 91 points in its first three games, all wins. Here come the Spartans now. Baum under center, rolls to his right, gets rid of the football. The barge on a screen pass makes the catch and gets out close to the 19-yard line. Spartans go to the fullback. Well, the fullback was open underneath on the little delay. Case had two receivers, including Homick, sprinting down the field. And again, Baum with options, choosing to go underneath in his comfort zone. The barge with his first reception of the season. He's a transfer out of the University of Colorado. 7.45 to play. First half. LaBarge gets the ball on the handoff this time and barrels ahead looking for first down yardage and he's close. It was second down and two and he gets the first down. And they will move the chains as they set the ball down at the 24 yard line. Well, officially, it will be a first down for the Spartans. Trevor LaBarge gets the Spartans a new set of plays. Joey Baum, the senior quarterback, takes the snap, gets rid of it. Homick makes the catch at the 30. Angles back to the middle of the field, 35, and he is hit and knocked down there. It'll be a pickup of close to 11 and another first down for Case. Now Dennison now knowing that Homick has put the ball on the carpet twice is holding him up and then bringing extra defenders in there to kind of grab and strip the ball away. In fact, Eric Conrad was grabbing at the ball as Homick was being held up by two other defenders from Dennison. 
Conrad trying to strip it away from Homick. Conrad out of the uh, same high school, Lakota East High School, as Sam Coffey. Joey Baum sets up in the shotgun. First and 10 from the case 37. They will give this handoff to Derek Bush. Breaks through the line, gets across the 40, is mashed from behind at the 45-yard line. Big hit applied there by Alex Syker, their sophomore, 6'5", 212, strong safety out of New Albany High School. Well, he was pushed out of the play by Bryce Coleman, but when Deitman made the cutback from the left back into the middle of the field, Deitman exposed himself for the big hit. Eight-yard pickup for the Spartans. Bad snap on the shotgun back to Baum. He scoops it up on a hop. Dives back to the 45-yard line, so it'll be third down and two as Baum handles that bad snap. Clock continues to run with 5.50 to play here in quarter number two at Case Field on Heritage Night. It is a cool night, but dry. Zach Homick on the sideline, Dave, holding his left hamstring up near his hip, limping, and still not back in the football game. They have Webster split wide left, nicely in a slot on the left side. Eye in the backfield with LaBarge at fullback, and they go to the freshman. Nope, that's Derek Bush, the senior, carrying over midfield, has the first down, Bush and came, spins his way down to the 47. And he came to the right side of the formation, and Case was unbalanced again to the right side. They had three offensive linemen to the right of center. Andrew Berkebile. Again, Berkebile wearing number 76. Originally in 71 tonight, but the jersey actually tore and earlier tonight they swapped out And so he'll wear 76 the rest of the way Zach Homick does check back in now He's with metal sits on the right side Webster is the lone man on the left showing blitz as Dennison Baum wants to get rid of it quickly does so to Zach Homick and the pass is incomplete. Homick is laid out after the ball bounced away from him. Hit hard by Drew Clannon. And it will be second down and 10 for Case. Well, Baum read the blitz, as you alluded to, and got rid of the football, tried to thread the needle to Homick across the middle. Yeah, the blitz came right in that area where Homick had the slant, but the ball was behind Homick. He had to turn around and then got laid out by, by Drew Clannon. Three receivers on the left this time. Baum drops back. They will go to the screen route. They get the ball out to Bill Deitman, who cannot stay on his feet. He dives ahead out close to the 41-yard line, a pickup of six on the play. Well, back-to-back -back blitzes by Dennison in case with the right call. That screen pass will slow the blitz down because those linebackers will have to stay home, and it was a shoestring tackle by Lane Hartfield that prevented Deitman from really picking up 15, 20, 25 more yards. Manageable third down here on third and five for Case from the Denison 42. Baum looks to get rid of it, does so to home. It coming down the sideline, makes the catch at the 26-yard line. He's knocked out of bounds. First down Case. Uh -huh. There defensively was Pat Effinger. Homick caught the ball and then turned his shoulders to prevent getting laid out. And these defensive backs for Denison are really showing some hard hits. They're coming after the receivers and dropping the shoulder. That one goes for 17 yards, and Homick feeling that one on the sideline as he comes over and talks to wide receivers coach Ryan Jones. They'll keep it on the ground here on first down. Looked like uh, Kenny Reardon back in there, the freshman getting the carry on first down. Not much running room, and it will be second down. Might have lost a yard there at second down and 11. Okay, showed that unbalance to the right again, but they had the three wide receivers to the left, and in the inside slot is Brian Webster. We'll have three receivers on the left. Case working from the near hash mark. Joey Baum calls out the signals. Reardon in the backfield, flanking Baum on the right. Baum looks to throw it, has good protection. Now he'll try and run it, but cannot get out of there, and he's knocked down quickly in the backfield. Adam Murray. The six-foot defensive lineman out of Notre Dame Cathedral Latin High School. Well, Baum there stepped up in the pocket. He felt the pressure behind him.
but then was undecisive as he stepped up, and that indecisiveness cost him the sack. He either needed to make the throw or tuck it and run, and that kind of in between cost him the yard. Third down and 12 for Case. From the Denison 27, they lead it by a score of 20 to nothing right now. Baum on third and 12 looks to throw it. Gets rid of it nicely. Down the middle of the field, makes the catch. Then he drops the football as he crosses the one yard line trying to dive in and it's incomplete. Baum put it right in there for nicely who was well covered and it was nearly a Spartans touchdown. Well, there was some confusion in the secondary for Denison. They split out. Both safeties opened up and nicely had the seam to run in and just was not able to haul it in. They will go for it here on fourth and 12, the exact situation they had a few minutes ago when they went for it on fourth and 12 and Baum was picked off inside the 10 yard line. Deitman in the backfield. Three receivers set on the right. Baum fires over the middle of the field. It's incomplete. Looking for Colin Repco on the pass slightly behind Repco. Incomplete. And Dennison will take over on downs with 2.20 to go now in the second quarter here at Case Field. It'll be first and 10, Dennison from the 27 with Case leading it by a score of 20 to nothing. Case had a 13-play drive there, Dave, and just unable to get any points on the board. He really took the ball down the field, had the ball for over six minutes, 6.05, 13 plays, and could not even get into the red zone. Joey Baum now 18 of 23, 198 yards passing on the night. Max Paulus, 5 of 10 for 25 yards. They will give this one to Fioroni. Fioroni is hit and knocked down back at the 25-yard line, but they may give him forward progress back to the line of scrimmage. I don't know what happened offensively for Dennison, but they look confused, and Adam Watson was almost there for the handoff between Paulus and Fiorini. Now Dennison trying to run the no huddle. Two minutes to go in the first half. Paulus calling out the signals from the shotgun. Behind him, Fioroni is the only man in the backfield. They have three receivers on the right side. He looks left for Carpenter, who makes the catch as he is headed out of bounds. And Boy, they are going to say down? he got down, but I did not see him touch a foot down as he went up for that pass and was knocked out of bounds. He went up, and I guess they're going to say he got a foot down, but... Boy, it looked like he was airborne around the hash marks, made the reception in the air and got pushed out of bounds. Third down and three from the 34-yard line. Seven-yard pickup and some movement on the line and a whistle. Well, no, the clock is running, Dave. Now they may have to adjust the game clock now after the pass was complete and out of bounds. The clock should have stopped and it was moving. Case leading it by a score of 20 to nothing. They had a 14 to nothing lead after one. They have scored one touchdown here in the second quarter. One thirty-six showing on the clock, but they are going to add time. Probably going to take that close to probably a minute 50, minute 52. Derek Bush has rushed for two touchdowns tonight. Case. Scoring both of their uh, uh, first two touchdowns on runs by Bush. Zach Homick had a touchdown reception. And it is 20 to nothing. Like eight seconds they're going to put back on. They're going to take it to 144. Waiting on that to get put up on the scoreboard. We are at Case Field tonight in Cleveland, Ohio. Case and Dennison, a battle of unbeatens tonight. Case 2-0. Dennison 3-0 on the season. Here we go, third down and three. 144 to go, second quarter. Max Paulus calls out the signals. Will swing it out to Fioroni. Juggling it, somehow comes up with it. Now drops it at the 30-yard line. They scramble for the football. And yeah. it looks like Dennison will have it. Well, that looked like it was a lateral and should be called a rush I don't know how they're going to score it statistically but it, that was a definite lateral pass we will get a timeout called by case here 
and uh, they marked the football at somehow on the 32 yard line. Well, I think when it came loose, ball squirted forward just a bit and Dennison fell back on it. Sophia Rini, who had problems controlling the lateral, spun away, then lost the football near the 30, but fumbled it forward where Case recovered at the 32. So it'll be fourth down and five for Dennison. Dan Calabrese and Zach Homick will drop back deep. Well, I wonder if Zach Homick is still having nightmares from two weeks ago when well, he took an incredible hit. Yeah, we'll talk to fielding um, a kick. We'll talk to Zach Homick at halftime about that play and about that game. He has gone over the 2,000 yard mark in career receiving yards tonight. He has scored a touchdown. Calabrese waits on the punt. Here it comes from Jake Schaefer. This is a good kick. It'll send Calabrese back to the 29. Runs toward the right side. Tries to turn the corner. Gets tripped up. And is down behind the 30. Tackled by the 29-yard line. Yeah, the old coach said the carpet monster come up and got him. 119 to play in the first half. 20 to nothing Case. And defensively, Case has been very tough tonight. They have not allowed Dennison to mount a threat. Well, Case was just on the field for six and a half, almost six and a half minutes of clock time, then forced a three and out by Dennison offense. That Dennison big red defense has been on the field a lot in the second quarter here. Bomb from the shotgun will drop back to throw, dumps it off to Bryce Coleman, the tight end, gets out across the 30 to the 34 yard line. Bryce Coleman out of Solon, Ohio. He's a junior with his second reception. That's his first varsity catch in the field of play, Dave. He had one catch last year for a touchdown, one two weeks ago for a touchdown. This one, they're going for Coleman in back-to-back -back plays. It's incomplete. Coleman now, as you alluded to, four career receptions, two touchdowns, so he's 50%. They'll get a new play sent in as they look over. Coleman doesn't know whether to come off. And now he does. Metalsitz checks in with nicely on the right side. Webster is on the far left as the lone receiver. And with Case going into the wind now, even a slight wind, field goal might be out of the option. Baum tries to throw, but undershoots nicely out near the sideline. Homick and nicely were running in the same area. And Case reaches fourth down very quickly. It was one of the more unproductive series of the night. Fourth down and four for Case from the 35-yard line. That's Case's first three and out tonight, Dave. They did have a couple of series where they had the turnovers, but the first time they've had to kick after three plays. Dan Vassell will kick this one away. Spinning punt, a fair catch called for. Flag comes out. Case picked up the loose ball. That's a very late, late fair catch signal. Yeah, Drew Clannon called for the fair catch, but as the ball was almost upon him, you know, the officials are going to talk about it. Case did run into him before the ball got there. And like last week, the ball hit. Clannon in the helmet but flags all over the place this time as opposed to at Rochester when they were only in the pockets they'll mark it up to the 49 yard line after they walk off the 15 yard penalty <laughs> but the signal that was given was an invalid fair catch signal which should have gone against Denison case should have been called for interference the referee gave the invalid fair catch signal. 43 seconds left in the first half. 20 to nothing, Spartans. Denison football. Now movement on the offensive line. Flags come out and they'll stop the play. Paulus did get the snap, was ready to fire it downfield. The whistle stopped play and this will go against Denison, a five yard penalty. First and 15, they'll mark it back to the 44 yard line. Ismail Zafer was the one who moved just a little bobble, just you know, in a three-point stance, Dave, and he kind of sat down with his rear end, flexed his legs, and just enough to catch the attention of the umpire. 
20 to nothing Case leading Denison tonight. We're at Case Field. Spartans have won five in a row against the Big Red. Back to throw, Paulus goes deep downfield looking for Adam Carpenter and that ball is knocked away, incomplete. Nice defensive coverage by Kerry Dieter, the starting corner for Case and they will look at a second and 15. Now Denison's run 11 plays on first down in the first half so far. Just the second time they've thrown the ball and you could see Case creeping up on first down which left the man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. Both of those passes have been incomplete on first down. Paulus at second and 15 now. Three receivers stacked on the far right side. Crawford is one of them. He's open, but they'll go deep downfield, and this one will be incomplete as they look downfield for Lucas Graham. And the ball well overthrown. Crawford was wide open in the flat with some running room in front, but they elected to go for the bomb. Yeah, Paulus looking get... Dennison on the scoreboard and just out through his receiver. Carpenter did have a step. Paulus threw it about five yards too far. Third down and 15. Dennison operating in their own territory at the 44-yard line. Max Case Paulus. Six defensive backs in the ball game. Max Paulus takes the snap, drops back to throw, and that ball, well, now he's going to roll out, looks to throw it, and that ball is intercepted. James Wadica comes up with the interception for Case, brings it back across the 40, out of bounds at the 45-yard line, and the Spartans come up with another interception. Paulus tried to throw that on the run, even though he was moving to his right, and got nothing on it as he did not stop to throw and was well underthrown, and Wadica there for the interception. He was hit in the backfield. I thought for a moment the ball was stripped out of his hand, but he kept it and rolled out to the right and through the interception. Wanaka comes up with it. And it's first and 10 case with 18 seconds left. The Spartans leading it by a score of 20 to nothing here on Heritage Night at Case Field. A bomb's already thrown 27 passes in the first half. He will take the snap, roll back. Now he wants to run it as he tucks it on the left arm, runs over to the sideline and gets out of bounds without being hit. Nice scramble by Joey Baum for a first down as he gets out across midfield. And we'll see exactly where he stepped out over on the far side near the Denison bench. Uh, they will mark this ball at the 46 yard line. Was it last year against Denison that at the end of the half, Dan Whalen completed two Hail Marys to Tim Cowdrick? I believe that was here against Oberlin. Now Baum will throw deep, and that ball intended for Homick is intercepted. Nope, almost intercepted. The Big Reds' Tyler Lambert was there but could not hang on to it. Now we've heard that Joey Baum has an arm to throw at about 65 yards. Coaching staff says he can take two steps and, and throw it about that distance. Well, for this... He only really has to throw it about 50 in the air. You figure he'll let it go right around midfield and see if Case can haul it in near the end zone. Baum 19 of 27 so far in the first half. He will roll back here. They'll dump it off looking for metal sits, but it's incomplete as Baum turned around, threw back across the field. Well, good thing incomplete. Metal, good thing metal sits got a hand on it. Otherwise, that might have been an interception and return for a touchdown. As it is, it's the final play of the first half, and Case leads by a score of 20 to nothing.